Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. Today is September 2nd, 2024 at 8.38 a.m. And this is vlog number 49. Today, we're just going to pretty much continue with the stealth TV tray and we're going to make it finalized. We're going to have it ready for 3D printing because I did receive an update on when I'm receiving my filament that usually goes on this top shelf over here um, and it's coming tomorrow. So that's great news. We're going to wrap it up and just apply all the changes that I had made uh, to get everything to work right like this drawer and everything else. And once we apply all that we can go into Bamboo Studio and I kind of have an idea of what I want to do with it in Bamboo Studio so as to not make the stealth TV tray top heavy. But nonetheless, it is currently 75.4 degrees Fahrenheit in the 3D printer room with 64% humidity. If you're new to this channel, this is my tiny 3D print farm of five Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers. And I usually print for production purposes, plates and latches. That's the left latch, that's the right latch. Got the uh, left plate and right plate. And I print them out in gray PETG and they look really great. For some reason, this printer that I print this one out on gives me little three little lines over here. However, they're completely flat. I don't know what the deal is with that, but still looks great, still functions and does what it needs to do. And I like to number out my printers as one, two, three, and four. I have printer number five over here with the AMS light combo. And I have an AMS light combo mainly to use the auto refill system. And here is a near empty spool of filament of the gray PETG. And so when these printers can't print out, well, I should say when the spools on these printers can't print out a full latch or plate, I bring it over here to the AMS light and I put it on to the auto refill system. So when one spool finishes up, they'll just switch over to the next spool and finish the job. Here are printer number five's prints. They look amazing. And these are done by probably, yeah, two, two spools of near empty spools. I got one there. I got some down in that box there and uh, it does a great job. By the way, over here we got all these 3D prints that are available for free on my Maker World. If you're interested, the link is down in the description below. This is a pretty big project right here. It's the laser blade from Lightyear, but you got some Star Wars thrones for your phone and some other cool little 3D prints you can get. That's the stealth TV tray right there. If you're interested, check out my Maker World. Ah, oh, some good coffee. Nonetheless, let's head over to the computer, get this stealth TV tray finally finished to you in the computer. All right, guys, so we're here in Maya, and I got a few files open here. One is the completed desk um, from the previous version so that we can um, add everything as we go along. So this is the previously completed version and since then we've done a bunch of tolerance tests and whatnot and we're just going to update everything so that it matches now and i will say that again we're just going to get rid of the stuff we don't really need that worked out pretty good and we're just going to keep the stuff that uh that needs to be updated so this needs to be updated but we'll keep that as kind of a visual representation these dovetails worked really well that also worked really well so Let's see what we've got in B. We don't need B. And if you've been following along in this series, uh, you would know what, what all these things are. We already have an updated version of that. So we can go ahead and grab these. And I realize we have an updated version of that as well. So we're going to grab those, take them out of their layers. We definitely don't need them there. And we can come into this scene here, which is the last scene we worked on. I'm just going to bring those up. And we'll go ahead and make it correct. I know that uh, since the last scene, we've definitely updated a few things. So first thing I want to work on is get these simple, get the simple stuff out of the way. So I'm going to grab all this, just throw it in a layer. And I know that this is the hole that I've worked on. So I'm going to duplicate that. That's the screw hole I made uh, bigger. And I'm just going to grab everything here except the cylinder and delete it. We don't need anything else. I'm going to delete that as well, as well as that. And now we have what we need. Now I have the center there. And I could just vertex snap that here and match the whole size. I'm going to grab all those verts there and begin to size to match. That looks perfect because you can't even see that. So that's how I know we've reached the screw hole size we need to reach. Likewise, we want to make those screw holes big as well. I like this star pattern it made. That's really cool. And I'm just going to scale to match. That's looking great. And I'm going to do the same for this one here. As a matter of fact, would I want the screw cap to be big? 
no because it needs to stay snug on there so i'll just make it a tad bit bigger just so it sits in easily but other than that these i can officially call complete so all we're going to need from this is pretty much that oh i'm glad i saw this because i do need to get rid of this um, inner part here's the old one i'm going to go ahead and Go to contiguous edges, detach. All right, and so now that's detached. It goes all the way in. I can extract the faces, so it's two separate objects now. Very nice. And now we can bring back everything we're working with. We have this piece. We have the smaller piece, the piece we actually need. And I want to border those edges again, so I can just make sure that everything connected. I kind of want to make this the last version I work on, but we may never know. Prototyping process, you can always find something later on down the line and need to adjust. But this is complete, so we can throw that in the completed section. Is there anything else in here we can work on? Yes. So we have this the way it needs to be, but I do want to create a simple locking mechanism. And how I intend on doing that it's just kind of at the very end here, creating like a little speed bump and then having the negative speed bump cut out of the lid so that when it comes there, it kind of latches into place. Even though this actually works really well, the lid, I just want to make sure that it's staying put, you know, but we'll do that in the main file. So with that in mind, I think we're ready to move on over to the main file. I'm going to bring these over. I do want to make it a different color just so I know that, hey, these are the ones that I brought over. I think we're ready to copy and paste them over. Copy and paste. Cool. And as you can see, we got some pasted prefixes here. We don't want that. We just go to modify, search and replace name. And we could go search for pasted underscore underscore replace with this dollar sign all. And that gets rid of everything. Okay. So the first thing I want to work on is this drawer. I'm going to bring that out and let's take a look at this table. And the first thing I'm going to do is increase the size here. This blue is a little hard for me to work with. I do want to make it brighter so I can just see what I'm doing better. So with that in mind, I got all this stuff. I'm gonna protect snap it at a certain point so that when I bring it over here, I know that I've lined it up properly. As you can see, that's lined up perfectly. And now we just need to make this hole bigger. And to do that, it's gonna grab all these verts. And now I can make the hole bigger. All right, so let's go ahead and match that. And like last time, I'm just gonna bring this over and increase the size here, there. All right, there you have it. I feel comfortable deleting this one and calling this part complete. However, again, I do want to make that speed bump over here. And I also want to do the same thing for the lid, the negative version rather. And let's see, since we've got a lot of um, triangles here, hopefully it won't give us too much of an issue trying to create something simple like that. But I think I'm going to make it easier for myself and just kind of boolean it in. So I know that I want this little bump to be really small. And when I say small, I'm talking one millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead, grab a measuring cube, multiply that by 10. And this should be at one millimeter because we should be in millimeters, but I'm going to double check here. Yep, we're in millimeters. And we're just going to zoom in on this guy, bring the pivot down below and raise it on up. That one millimeter looks like a lot. Why don't we do half a millimeter? I think that I feel like would be better for me at least because that looks like quite a distance. Let's grab this 0 0.5. There you go. That I feel like is a better height for a little bump I'm going to be putting in here. I'm going to grab a little cylinder. Let's actually bring it over here and rotate that. Very nice. And bigger. Sink that in. And I actually like sinking that in at a halfway point. And maybe we can elongate this. That as well as elongate it this way. Matter of fact, we can grab that, snap it over to that edge. Maybe just let it sink in just a little bit. And this one, we don't need to let it sink in. Yeah, maybe just this way. All right. Now that's looking good. Now I'm just going to duplicate that, bring it on over to the other side. I kid you not guys, this was kind of bugging me. I really wanted to put in this little locking mechanism so that it doesn't create a problem later on. And I kind of just lined it up here like that. This is looking good. So we got our little bumps in there that I feel like would latch on pretty well. Maybe we can bring them out a little bit further about here. Yeah, that's looking good. Now I want to grab my lid and bring it on back. But I do want to isolate those cylinders I just created. So let's take a look at what we're working with here. So I'm going to grab these, duplicate them. Now that we got a duplicate of that, I can grab this and bring it back and work on that. All right. So now that we're here, we can go ahead and work on this a bit. 
And I'm just now realizing that the way this sits in here, maybe I can raise it up a little higher because it's just so low. And so I just want to make this a little bit thinner so as it passes over this, it's able to uh, pass over easily just in case. As a matter of fact, I'll bring it out about this much. And then we'll just grab all these faces here and delete them. And now we can just go ahead and raise this up by extruding it, making it match up to there. Make sure these are connected. And now we can go ahead and start bridging. Fill that hole. And there you have it. I'm just going to make sure everything is connected. All right. Now we can go ahead and do a Boolean. But we'll do a difference function. All right. That's looking good. We have that little lock piece that I like. But I just realized something that we do want this to uh, be a little bit bigger. So there's a little bit of a tolerance. Totally forgot about that. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. I'm going to bring this on over to where I think it'll connect and increase the size a little bit. But let's do bring this back to the center and increase the size. All right. And bring it on up this way. Match it. Very nice. Now I feel like I can do that Boolean difference. Perfect. All right. So that when this thing goes in, it'll just lock into place with those there. I'm going to go ahead and delete the history. And likewise, I want to do the same thing for this side. Rest down here anyway. Yeah, that actually would work great. So. With that in mind, I can bring this back out and we can just go ahead and run a Boolean on it. And with that there, I feel confident that we have a functioning locking mechanism. All right, so I have to line up the legs where they belong. So I want to go to a place where it's kind of easy to uh, line it up with. And I think the best way is probably right here. Let's line that up there and just rotate it until it's correct. Now I can go ahead and delete that leg. That's in its place. Now we're going to do the same for this leg. That's looking good. Everything is lined up perfectly. Now what I'll do is I'll just grab these, put them in a group and duplicate special them over. They got to be in the right orientation. And there you go. I'm just going to throw those in a layer for right now and delete these legs. Sure, they were deleted properly. Okay, we're almost there. All we've got left to do is place everything where it needs to. And what I mean by that is just the washer and this nut. And I can say, guys, that we are ready to print this thing out. There's just a couple of things we need to do to make sure everything is clean. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do all that off camera. Basically, I'm going to clean up my scene, delete all extra groups, and make sure everything is UV, triangulated. There are no end gons and we can bring it over to Bamboo Studio. All right, guys, so we pretty much got everything labeled out and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna see you guys in Bamboo Studio after I export everything out as an OBJ. All right guys, we're not gonna jump into Bamboo Studio just yet. Um, although it's ready to be sliced, this video dragged on a little bit longer than I was expecting. And I just wanted to wrap it up and save it for the next video. Thank you guys so much for joining me on today's vlog. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.